now it's my pleasure to have Dr. Maria Murad, Director of the Precision Immunology Institute at the ICANN School of Medicine at Mount Sinai to give the next talk. All right, so my, it's a pleasure to be here today and I'll be talking about the big effort in my lab to identify novel immune target of cancer, focusing on the specific immune lineage that I'm going to try to introduce uh, you know, in the first part of my talk. So uh, Aviv uh, introduced that immune cells are really a part of the tumor microenvironment. And this is what I'm highlighting here is that all these different immune cells are really sometimes dominate the tumor lesions. So immune cells form a large network of cells with distant and synergistic functions. And there is four main tasks that this, the immune uh, system is trying to uh, accomplish. And this starts with the recognition of a threat. So how to recognize a threat, and the threat could be the tumor cells or an infected cells respond to a threat by producing inflammatory molecule, recruiting effector cells, remember a threat. And this is what we call this memory response that's quite useful when we want to react faster when the threat uh, uh, occurs again, but also regulate a response because the risk is always to have an overblown immune response that can lead to a uh, uh, potential autoimmune response. And this is what the immune system is always trying to do. And this is why the immune cells are present, in fact, in most disease lesions from cancer to atherosclerosis, to, uh, uh, to uh, neurodegenerative disease, there is always an inflammatory component that really is present in disease lesions. And I argue that targeting uh, uh, inflammation should be part of all uh, uh, treatment against all human diseases, because there is always, this inflammation is always contributing to disease outcomes. Okay, now T cells are an, imp an important effector arm of the immune system that have a dedicated machinery to, um, uh, to eliminate the damaged cells, in this case, the tumor cells, in a very specific manner. So here, for example, ah, you won't be able, I think, to see my, uh, uh, my little video. Oh, that's a shame, but what I wanted to show you, maybe I can do it this way, is that the T cells here in gray have been uh, 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 educated to recognize the cells expressing a green fluorescence protein. This is the tumor in green here, and they are going to kill the tumor cells that express the GFP, but there is another tumor cells here that lack this green fluorescence protein, and well, the T cells cannot kill it, right? And this specificity of killing is what cancer immunologists are trying to really a harness. However, what's important to realize is that T cells cannot recognize tumor cells on their own. They have to be educated to recognize a, a, a threat. And there is two cells uh, that really are going to, to educate uh, T cells. And these are dendritic cells and macrophage, and we call them antigen-presenting cells. And what they do is that they capture uh, a, a damaged cells, in this case, the tumor cells, process it in a way that will be recognizable by T cells. So this is a very important basic immunology principle that's important to really understand when we think about T cell modulation strategy. The cells that are able really to educate the T cells, not only to recognize, but also the type of effector program that T cells are going to acquire are these two uh, um, cellular compartments dendritic cells and macrophage. And my lab has been working for more than three decades now, two decades in my lab, me for three decades, and trying to really uh, understand the biology of these cells and try to really harness their biology to, modu to modulate an immune response against threat for cancer and inflammatory disease. Now, while they can instruct these same cells also regulate the response, this is a major task of the immune system that has been understudied in immunology. We study a lot of activation, instruction of infected program, but we have not studied enough this regulatory program. And these same immune cells, right, while they are instructing T cells to act, they also make sure that T cells don't act too much by really inducing and engaging checkpoint molecule, which <clears throat> 
limit T cell activity. And, and Jim and uh, Alison and, and, and Honjo have shown that by inhibiting this checkpoint molecule, you can rescue T cell uh, effector uh, uh, function, and you can in fact rescue also T cell ability to kill a tumor. But we know also that there are many more molecules that can do that beyond the PD-1 and CTLA-4, which are home run, you know, so we may not be able to find another home run, but there are many other molecules that are regulating T cells. And I will argue that these APCs are the ones that really are going to shape or regulate uh, uh, much more potently uh, uh, T cell function. So current clinical checkpoint blockade strategy target these two checkpoint blockades. There's more than thousands of female molecules that regulate effector immune cells. So there is enormous opportunity to identify novel immune target of cancer, novel combination therapy, and also biomarker of response to stratify patients and maximize response to treatment. And I argue that targeting this antigen presenting cell compartment is key to this endeavor. And this is the focus of my lab. So we focus on these two lineage of antigen presenting cells, macrophage and dendritic cells. Both of them share this ability to, 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 to capture, process, and present tumor antigen uh, or, 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 or uh, antigen from infected cells to T cells, but they also differ. Uh, there are a lot of, lot of differences and subtleties, some, some that are subtle and some that are less subtle in their ability to shape a, a, an immune response. So dendritic cells are unique in their ability to instruct a T cell program. They can instruct from scratch. They can take a naive T cells and really do whatever they want with them. Macrophages are less potent to do that, but they have they are very potent at shaping the microenvironment because they, in addition to their ability to interact with T cells, they also produce many molecules that are going to uh, shape uh, uh, the, the, the immune microenvironment by recruiting different types of immune cells, but they also produce metalloproteases and metabolites and contribute to the development of new neovisons. So they are a cell that really is, is a tissue cell that have in addition this immune function, whereas dendritic cells, which I always argue have developed more later during the evolutions are really did yet a sharp focus on, on, on modulating T cell function. And today I'm going to talk mainly about these cells. Although now I realize that for Ron, I should have talked about macrophage. That's okay. All right, so dendritic cells. So <clears throat> while we have learned a lot about the T cell molecular feature that are conducive to effector anti-tumor immunity, much less is known about these macrophage and dendritic cells. And really to fill this gap of knowledge, we have built in my institution what we call a neoadjuvant research group. And this group, which consists of, of, of surgeon, pathologists, interventional radiologists, and cancer immunologists, are thinking about uh, uh, really human cancer lesions that can be most informative in our quest in understanding the molecular immune feature that are conducive to, uh, <clears throat> to anti-tumor immunity. So what we decided to do is spend a lot of time really profiling uh, uh, treatment naive surgical lesions, uh, because this enables us to enables us to reduce confronting variables that are induced by prior therapy. We are working on an intact immune system because the patients have not been bombarded by steroid and, 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 uh, and chemotherapy. And, and, and this is how we are going to build our knowledge base. And then we take the surgical cancer lesions and we try to profile them using the technology that Aviv introduced so elegantly earlier, right? So we are going to really try to look at all these uh, 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 cellular program that are present in the treatment naive lesions. Okay, so this is so we build now quite a, a, an effort in, in profiling three main tumor lesions: lung, liver, and, and, and colorectal cancer lesions using different type of single cell technology, including site seek. And uh, <clears throat> And I'm not going to go into in detail how we do that, but what we focus on is uh, the immune compartment mainly that is present in the cancer versus the adjacent tissue, which is tumor free. And we are going to try to identify molecular programs that are enriching the tumor lesion versus the adjacent tissue. 
And here, this is a high level view of uh, these molecular programs that are annotated by immunologists. So what we can do when we look at this uh, uh, molecular map, if we spend a lot of time using prior immunology knowledge to annotate this cluster. And I will argue this is a very important effort, right? You should not just subcontract your analysis to uh, uh, computational biologists, but this should be really an integrated effort by uh, uh, experts immunologies that have been working on a specific pathway for years and computational biologies. And this is this type of uh, integrated hub that we have built in our, uh, you know, what we, I, we call the target program. And uh, so one thing that we've done, and, uh, and this is a side uh, uh, your discussion I, I, I wanted to have is that we compare the, the program, the, the molecular program between the tumor and adjacent tissue versus mole the, 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 the molecular program across different tumors. And what we found is that there is much more similarity in terms of molecular uh, immune program across tumor than between the tumor and adjacent tissue. And this is a very, I find, a very hopeful finding because it suggests that somehow the, uh, uh, the first, it's not so surprising because checkpoint blockade uh, 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 is working across different tumor types, but it suggests that in fact uh, there is a commonality of response uh, uh, across tumor that we could harness. And what also is interesting is that we find that now when we go and look at the molecular profile performed by different groups, uh, 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 we can see that because of this unbiased profiling, now science suddenly is much more reproducible, right? So we compare the cluster that we, the immune program that we identify in our Monsanai cohorts. You know, Monsanai is close to Harlem. We have many uh, very strong ethnic, ethnical uh, diversity compared to other uh, uh, molecular profiling performed, for example, by this Belgium group. And we can see that we can now find very similar program across these different cohort here it was a lung cancer lesions. So again, this suggests that uh, um, uh, this, this commonality of response that we could harness. All right, so now I'm going to dive a little bit on dendritic cells. So I'm going to do hardcore immunology and, uh, and, and if it's too difficult, then we can maybe talk about it in the discussion. So now we are going to look and dive in these two uh, cellular compartments, macrophage and dendritic cells. And we look at different programs that are accumulating in the tumor versus the adjacent tissue. And I've been working on these cells for a long time. So, you know, we know how to recognize, you know, something that is really out of the ordinary. So what we so we start to annotate uh, these clusters, and we find, for example, these different population of dendritic cells. And in fact, some of them was identified by my laboratory. And we look, and we were intrigued by this cluster of dendritic cells here. You know, here the effort again, the effort is to find molecular programs that are uh, uh, dampening or limiting or restricting APC function, right? That can give us a hint on on DC uh, 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 ability to really regulate, reduce or limit anti-tumor uh, function, right? So we are looking at programs that can help us, you know, and uh, uh, understand, you know, their role in, in tumor lesions. And we are very intrigued by this dendritic cell cluster that we found uh, by this single cell profiling uh, uh, strategy. So we find it in lung cancer. We also found it in liver cancer. We also find it in colorectal cancer. And now we had find it in all cancer that we've looked at. So we, you know, it was a very interesting uh, uh, cluster. And so the, 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 the first things we did is ask whether the same, so now, now you know, it, it's difficult. So, so what do you do when, when you profile? And one thing that you do is go and try to understand uh, uh, the function of these cells ex vivo, or you bring it to a mouse model. And this is what we did here. We go and do the same exercise of profiling in mouse lung cancer lesions and ask whether this same DC cluster is present. And indeed we, identify the sum, uh, the same uh, DC molecular program in this mouse lung cancer lesions. So now I'm going to just describe what this cluster express. And what we find is that this cluster of dendritic cells express many maturation molecules. These are molecules that are very good at activating T cells, but also express a very strong regulatory molecule. And you know what was striking is that this DC express very high level of this checkpoint molecule called PDL1, which engage PD1 on, on T cells, but also many other regulatory molecules. And this is what we were exciting about because potentially we could harness to modulate T cell function. 
This DC also express migration molecules. So this is also something that's very interesting to us because dendritic cells, when, <clears throat> uh, uh, are, when they are activated, they migrate where T cells are, which is lymphoid organs, either lymph node, tumor draining lymph node or lymphoid structure in the tumor lesions. So we call these cells uh, MREG for maturation and regulatory molecule. And then we spent a lot of time trying to understand how this uh, program was induced. And what we found is that this regulatory and uh, maturation molecule was induced when dendritic cells captured tumor antigen. And this is what I'm showing you here. I'm saying, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that I'm out of time. So I have to uh, go a, a bit faster now. So this, reg this program was induced when dendritic cell ate tumor antigen. So now if they ate, usually they have to present it and present it to T cells. So the next question we ask is whether this program was in fact interacting with T cell. And we use two strategies. We use this peak seek strategy that was developed by Ido Amid's group. So one of the postdocs of Ido Amid from the Weissman spent a few months with us at Sanai. And then using this technology that purified, in fact, doublet cells. You take a human tumor lesions and then you purify cells that express both myeloid marker and T cell marker, and then bring it to the single cell sequencer. Mm -hmm. What we found is that in this doublet, T cells that were, the DC that were interacting with T cells were in this MREG program. So the MREG are the DC that are interacting with T cells. I'm going fast here, I'm sorry. And then we went and used spatial transcriptomics to ask where this MREG program was present. And here with the help of our pathologies, we first annotate uh, these tumor lesions, and then we are going to project this different program. And what we found is that this MREG program was specifically enriched in tertiary lymphoid structure. Well, we are very interested in this structure because these are lymph node-like structure that we know are recruiting T cells to the tumor site, and these are abundant with T cells. So if MREG are here, it means that they are playing a key role in shaping T cell function. <clears throat> okay, so, uh, so what I've showed you, I'm going to go fast here. What I've showed you is that this MREG uh, uh, program is induced when dendritic cells eat tumor cell, is eat tumor antigen. They are really interacting with antigen-specific T cells, and we believe that if we focus on this program, we can identify relevant pathway for the modulation of antigen-specific tumor immunity. Maybe I'll have to stop in the, uh, on this slide. So now, you know, the, the, the beauty of single cell profiling is that it helps us resolve really the molecular composition within cellular compartment. Now we realize that the same dendritic cells has, uh, has uh, at the same time both regulatory program and immunogenic program. And it's all about this balance, right? And, and this, is, this is really the definition of an immune response. An immune response is always uh, the, the, the end result of a balance between activation and regulation. So now what we are doing is trying to really understand this balance better and try to really target programs that can help us shift toward immunogenicity, right? And couple this tolerogenic from the regulatory program within the same cellular compartment. And we, we are, and, and an example of that is you know, working on this balance of interferon gamma receptor and I4 receptor. What we found is that these dendritic cells express very high level of IL-4 receptor. Now, IL-4 is a, a, a type 2 cytokine that is associated with allergic response and usually dampen uh, <clears throat> what we call type 1 immunity that's very important to get rid of tumor cells and, and, and virally infected cells. And what we did, so I can stop here. And what I was going to show you is when we block interferon gamma receptor, we dampen this immunogenicity. When we block IL-4, we enhance uh, 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 tumor immunity. And this uh, is very, very interesting to us because we realize that this type 2 immunity, maybe I'll show you something here, blocking IL-4. But we realize that this IL-4, which we thought to be an allergic response is in fact present in many epithelia. It's a primitive response not to induce allergy, but really to respond to different types of injury. And it becoming really a dominant program in my group now is really understanding type 2 immunity in the context of anti-tumor immune function. 
Okay, so I'm going to stop here, unfortunately, because, right? Do I have to stop, Pam? I have to stop, no? Or should I just... It, it would be best so that we can move on to the next talk and have time for... Okay, uh, I mean, I'm going to writing. stop here all right so i just wanted to just say that the big focus is really this immune balance maybe just like show this composition understand this immune balance you know the balance of of, of molecular composition really trying to shift and now we have a big focus on really trying to dampen these uh, uh, type 2 response that are dominating many tumor epithelial uh, uh, compartments all right <clears throat> 